Welcome back to Monster Train. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I don't, brain shut down for a moment there. So I got I got a few disclaimers for you as we get into this one. This is a little fade run. Uh, it's late. It's 1.30 a.m. I know what you're thinking. 1.30 a.m. What day is it? Uh, well, I'll tell you. Today is Monday. And then I know what you're going to think after that. Wait, don't you stream on Mondays? Yeah, normally. However, today I had to take a night off from streaming because I have a big project due in one of my classes on Wednesday. Uh, it's due, I mean, technically it's due Thursday, you know, Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. And so I told myself that today I was going to finish the program and then tomorrow I'm going to do the write-ups and all of that and then I'm going to turn it in. And yeah, I spent the last, was it, it was 1.30? I spent the last probably about 10 hours working on that program. On and off, on and off, not like super like hyper-focused, but like, you know, work on it for like three or four hours, let the problem that I'm stuck on marinate and work on it again once I have a solution in mind. It is now mostly done, like it works. There's some touching up I need to do, but you know, you don't, you don't care about that. But I'm gonna be very scattered tonight. The other thing I want to talk about before we get into it here is uh, I'm probably going to be... So, when did I record the last episode? Let me think about this. Last episode was recorded, I think, on Friday night? Yeah, it was recorded on Friday night. So this is the first one since I started the new stream week. And I have moved my... I'm, I'm moving away from Monster Train a little bit on the stream. All that means for the YouTube is that I have a lot of highlights lined up, but the stream highlights may run out if I stop playing Monster Train altogether. I'm still not 100% certain. This series will stay as a little me and you one-on-one. -on -one. I talk through all my thoughts because I still enjoy the game enough to play it at least once per day. However, I'm feeling a little burnt and the next update being mods is not something that I'm super excited for. So I may just take a break on the stream and I'm going to look to also diversify the YouTube content a little bit. I'm thinking about playing uh, on stream. I've been playing Spelunky too. I will hopefully have a video of that up sometime soon. And I'm thinking about playing some team fight tactics. Like I might try recording one of those after this and see how it feels. Anyway, enough rambling. It's two and a half minutes into the video and I haven't even started the run. Uh, you know, that's it. That's all. I'm looking to expand the content a little bit, is all. And I recognize that a lot of you are just watching for Monster Train, and I respect that, I understand that. However, I also feel like if I sit here and stagnate on this game, I will eventually lose it. Alright, that's the end. That's all I have to say for you now. Let's move into the run, shall we? Uh, it's been a few days since I last played. I think it was Friday last, so... You know, we're in for a good one. We got a... Little Fade Run, Exile Melting, and Normal Awoken. Pushback Talos, Rage Fell, Sap Seraph. Not a great boss lineup. Not a big fan of Pushback Talos. Trip Fall, Razor Sharp Edge, Sacred Wix. Sacred Wix is a good starter for Little Fade, and Razor Sharp Edge is nice as well as a way to kill her. Uh, I like going to the champion first as Little Fade. The reasoning for this is because if you pick Little Icarus, which I believe I will here, uh, if I pick Little Icarus, then... I know not to take a backline killer. Although I've been playing a lot of Little Icarus, and we do have access to Animus of Will for Firelight. Hmm. I'm gonna go Little Icarus. I just, I really like Little Icarus, and I'm just, I'm gonna play it. We expect some early hits to come through. I'm very down with a Pyre Wall here. Little Icarus is a path that has multiple ways to go through it. Really, really glad to see a Mark of Invasion here. Now we just have to draw a Reform on turn two. So I gotta, I gotta start by walking us through the tenets of Little Fade. The first one is to make sure... Ah, being able to kill her here is insane. I guess actually it's not that good because she actually lost the health. It's good though because she starts her first death and such. But I have to make sure that I don't play any train stewards. That's going to be p uh, part one. Part two is I need to pick up a tank for Little Fade. Doesn't really matter what it is, but I need to grab something. And then it's just remove. We'll get a bunch of we'll get a bunch out of this. 
Uh, we're gonna look for Moldover as soon as possible on this one. Very nice. Uh, interesting, isn't it? Got one, one of those coming up. Nine spikes. If I play her, she'll die next round, right? Let's just go. It goes... The five hits dropping her to eight. No, sorry, nine. Then two hits, and then these both die. So she'll get three more kills, and ideally then the boss afterwards. And it goes five. She's at... Nine. As long as she is tanking all of this, it's good to play the train steward here. I wonder, is there a case for moving this foot soldier down for any reason? Let me think about this for a second. I think that there is not. This unit is going to go by me, the forge disciple. However, it's going to just bounce off the pyre armor. Having the pyre wall here is really nice because your first combat with a little fade is very shaky. But being able to just have this tank all of the hits that we would have taken is going to be very valuable. Right, so I think that three kills is as good as we can do here. Uh, no, actually, the correct thing to do is dripfall this guy. Sometimes if we hit dripfall again on the next turn, we can dripfall him again, and then we get him killed, I believe. Alright, we didn't hit it, it's fine. You're going to tank two rounds. Little Fade dies. Okay, I think we're fine here. I think we have done all that we need to. Little Fade is very powerful for where we are in this combat, or like where we are in this run, rather. And we hit the Primitive Mold, great news. Uh, if I miss one next turn, like there's a risk that I miss one next turn. Uh, never mind, she kills him. Cool. Like, extremely good combat. Leaving combat one with Fade at 17 spikes is so good. That's so good. Oh, that's excellent. Uh, I So normally I would pick Entombed Explosives here, because Entombed Explosive will allow... Uh, it, like, if you're having a bad run with Little Fade, you can use Entombed Explosive to smooth over the awkward period, which is 4-4 four, four, and 4-7, four, where your little fade might be at, like, 150. And you can't quite get that heavy kill. The explosive will let you pick it up. It's good for that. However, we're really far ahead of where we need to be on little fade, and I think we're going to snowball out of control. I guess we're not going to snowball out of control. Kind of depends on the next combat, I guess. I should take this. Talk myself into it. Vine Grasp is good to try and kill Little Fade with. If we draw this on her first, like on turn one, and then we get to kill and reform her, it's huge. Like, it's, it's really big. Because it increments your burnouts on Little Fade by one, which is a lot. Do I want to support a regen plan in this deck? The answer to that question depends on if we see Holdover. I think it's fine to go left here and look for a Wickless Baron. Multi strike plus 10 spikes for Tycoon. We can take Tycoon. Tycoon's fine. He's not excellent. He's not perfect. However, he'll get us through the next like two combats with ease, which is all we could really ask for. I don't want to give him multi strike though. I'm okay without it. And Tycoon's just gonna chill. He's gonna make us some money. This combat is a little awkward. Uh, we don't want to take the plus four. Because the plus four means that Fade gets less kills, and all we really care about here is, is Little Fade maximizing her kills. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. So I'm gonna do this for sure. And I just throw Fade down here, right? I was thinking I play Fade and Razor Sharper, but why do that when I can just play her right here? Yeah. Great question. There is no answer. Now I need to... Eh, you know, this is passable. She goes here and kills these two? No. She goes down here and she kills these two, and then when I reform her next turn, she'll be at 11, and that'll be 1, 2, uh, 7, 8. If I play her here, she'll kill these two, she'll die, and then if we reform her next turn, she'll be at 11, she'll take 3, 6, 9... Or no, 3, 6, 11. She won't kill this infiltrator. If I play her here, she should get one more kill. 
Assuming that I don't miss on one of my primitive molds, which would be very surprising. God, I really, like, the, the reason I like playing Spike's Fade more than anything else is just because, like, ma thinking out turns like that always feels good. Like, talking through that turn and then coming to the this is the correct play conclusion feels excellent. I guess uh, with the bear and we are balancing two different uh, desires, right? We want to we desire money, however we also desire kills on Little Fade. So I lost, or I gained one kill on Little Fade, but I lost some amount of money, which would be the two that died here. I, lo I lost like 20 gold, but I gained extra spikes kills, which is more important. I think, anyway. And if I reform you, you kill him, right? Good. Excellent. Uh, really good combat. I I can feel the snowball occurring. 37 spikes going into the third floor is very good. It means that we're going to be able to get her to a point where she's going to farm 45 health enemies, which means that we might be able to get that up to... Uh, we, we might to get to be pretty big here. We want to find a reform, and I don't think I want to take any of these. Uh, maybe a second Vine Grasp, because it is really nice to have a card to kill Fade with. But eventually that card is going to be Subsuming Blade, we hope, or maybe Crushing Demise, but preferably not Crushing Demise. All we need is removals, I think. I don't need this. Let me take a sip of my drink. There's a case to be made for duplicating primitive mold here. I don't like it. I'm gonna go to the right and I'm just gonna grab removals. I think similar in power is grabbing removals here. <laughs> uh, this is a tank, however, the problem is that burnout three, she's going to die. Starting at 40 health, it's only it's only 15 more health than where the Tycoon is starting, and I have to make some sacrifices to make Lady of the Reformed work, so I cannot take her here. Multi-strike, I miss multi-strike paraffin enforcer. Honestly, why even play the game if you're gonna miss plays like that? Realistically, I just completely and totally threw the run. We could have multi-strike paraffin enforced a little fade. I'm buying three removals here. I truly, I think that if we get through Talos, it's fine, like we win. And the only thing that's going to stop me is a bad turn of events where I don't pull a reform. So we remove three cards and make it a little more likely that we pull a reform. And I will take Wildwood Sap. That is going to be the base of us probably spreading into a regen based plan. So there's, there's two parts to playing a little Fade Run. Part one is the part where you scale her, and then part two is the part where you answer the question of how do we kill Seraph. Uh, at least a Spike's Fade, I should say. The answer to the first part of the question is pretty simple. It's just play her and then reform her. Sometimes it's play her and then use armor to buff her up. Sometimes it's something else. In this case, it's just play and reform. This is what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to play her, slam her down, and then she's going to probably spend most of her time killing on the second floor, pre preferably on the third floor, I guess. I could put her on the third floor, I suppose. Let's see. Uh, it's only a problem if I miss a permanent, if I miss a reform, but it shouldn't be the case. And this way, then she kills both of these over the next two turns. I believe this is correct. See what we got. As long as I pull a primitive mold here, she'll kill these two. Doesn't get this one, but then she'll kill these three and then die unless Talos walks up here. Uh, and where are you at? You're at four. I shouldn't incant this guy. If we can, we want to get her to 50. I don't think we can. What are we at here on Spice? We're going to be at 47. And these are at 50. So if I... Hmm. I can potentially get these. With a primitive... I mean, so I could guarantee it. Huh. Actually... 
I have a reform coming up, right? Yeah, okay. So, little fail. Let me, make, let me make sure I'm going through all of this properly, right? It's plus two attack and spikes two on the kills. So, she's going to get... This hits, dies to the spikes, little fate attacks, kills priest, she goes to 47. Just confirming that. This unit's at 47. Good. Uh, I reform little fade next turn. Little fade comes back at... It's plus 5, so 16 health. Little fade comes back at 16 health with burnout 3. Gets hit by this unit, dies, gets hit by this unit, and then Tycoon cleans this unit up because of the daze. What I can do here, yeah, I mean, I, I talk through all of this because it's important for me to make sure that I'm not fucking this up because this is this is not a play that makes sense. However, if I double Razor Sharp, this unit now does 22 damage, hitting Little Fade, killing Little Fade, and also killing itself. As long as I reform Little Fade, which is a guarantee, if there was even a hint of doubt that I would not be able to bring Little Fade back for this, I would not have done this. However, I was- this, this play is 100% certain. There was no variance in this turn at all. I just had to talk it through to make sure it worked. And that gets us two extra spikes and two extra attack on Little Fade, which might not seem like much, but it does make a difference because it is- it's a game of inches with Spikes Fade, I think. Now the final game of inches that we have to face. Uh, how much greed am I going to go for here? Because I should probably play her over three floors to kill the boss. However, I'll be sacking pyre health for that. So we're going to make a compromise, which is 50, so I'll take nine. If I play fade mid floor, and I think that's the correct line, play fade mid floor, uh, and then, oh, I don't have a lot of reforms in the deck. Oh. Now, isn't that interesting? Huh. I don't have enough reforms for this to be right. No. I shouldn't risk this. If I'm wrong, uh, I die. Right? We gotta play a little fade here. If the draw goes against me, it's over. And there's two reforms. Uh, it's... B basically, if I follow the line that I was thinking, which was play middle floor, and then I draw both of these cards on the next turn, I lose the combat. It's not worth it to me. I can take the Pyre Wall hit. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, so if I... you'll gain three attack, but I'll potentially save five if I drop this Foot Soldier. Really not worth it, right? Because I'm gonna take this damage anyway, most likely. Game froze for a second there. Good thing I actually recognized if I played that too quickly I would have died here probably. It's fine. Uh, I think fade kills here. Yeah. So I didn't have to play with such fear, however, it was fine. Like really, it's better to err on the side of caution there because if I'm even... Uh, basically what happens is... Yeah, I gotta change my headphone battery. What happens is, if I follow through with the original line, which was play a little fade on the middle floor and drop one of those enemies down on her, I kill those enemies and then little fade is left on the middle floor at like half health. And then, uh, if we follow that line through, uh, because of the draw that we saw there, little fade dies on that turn and we take about a hundred health off of uh talos probably and then on the next turn there is a five out of six chance that i miss a ref or a one out of six chance that i miss a reform card if it's the bottom card on the deck and then talos kills me and all of the thinking i've done on this run is for nothing so ultimately i think it's better to just be a hundred percent certain that you're not about to lose the run there because it's like I miss, a f I miss, like, two kills probably on Little Fade, but we gained kills on that fight by playing smart. So it's okay to make the sacrifice. We're at 55, which is solid. Uh, Intent on Death does not work with this Little Fade. It does nothing. Uh, Formless Child, nah. And Channel Song, nah. You can, like, make a case for Channel Song Fade, but it's gross. 
Don't need any of this. We have our basic plan. And this is a draw run. Yeah. This is a run where once we make it so that we're guaranteed to reform Little Fate every turn, there is no longer any concern of death. And once we're not afraid of dying, we get to play a little more liberally. The other big thing about playing Sa or Little Fade with spikes here is that this is the Seraph that I think she's best into. Diligence messy because you can't thin your deck out as much as you want to with Little Fade, and Chaste can mess up your spikes. Excellent. Don't even need uh, Molded if there's only one card in your Consume Pile. Or one, one unit in your Consume Pile, I should say. Am I playing? I'm, I can still play Entombed Explosive, I think. Uh, it can smooth over some places, so it's not right to get rid of it yet. And we'll take Spikes 3-3. Three, three. I shouldn't... Uh, with the way that this run is shaping up, I shouldn't need much. Do not want to take armor here. I want to take armor because I want to get Fade killing frontliners potentially in this combat, and armor makes that harder to get to. Yeah, the only the, the flaw in the way that I'm playing this actually, and I should probably play I should play Tycoon middle floor. Yeah, uh, moving forward from this position, I should put Tycoon in the middle floor, for sure. Because with the way that I'm playing it right now, what is possible to have happen is little fade. Uh, like when I play her on the top floor, eventually, as this one wants to do, I uh, like like she just doesn't die and then has three health in front of the tycoon ahead of the boss, and then I go ah. I actually move the tycoon down here. Drip falls will also be super useful in this run. I did not think of how good drip fall was until now. Drip falls really good. Sixteen. I am going to do this. Yeah. Being able to razor sharp enemies is super nice with this. I'm gonna do this. Little Fade comes back at 16, takes exactly 16, dies, and is fresh for the boss. Oh wait, no. Is fresh for this wave. Cool. Now, I do need to pull a Drip Fall at some point. I would actually- I, I need to burn that Sacred Wix when I see it in the future. And we want to play more Drip Falls. Oh, but it dazes them. Of course it dazes them. That makes sense. Why would it not? Hmm. Uh, 5 and 9 and 9. This is 23. Okay. We're just chilling. Like, we're at, a, we're at a good number of spikes. We're at 73, which is solid here. To be certain. Uh... So I have my primitive molds guaranteed. So if I reform Little Fade, she's at 26 health. Hmm. So with it guaranteed, I could play her up here, but she won't. Uh, she won't be killed. Right. It's uh. She's at 26, and this is... I can do 21 max to her here. So it's wrong to go for this. I cannot get the kill. So then we have to follow it up by posing what's the best way to go about it. Probably just a player down here. Uh, I could do... Uh, yeah, okay. I should... I, I should give up on these kills. I think that there's no way to get Little Fade these two slice. I can save the Pyre health by dropping the Tycoon and then putting Fade behind him. That will definitely kill this boss. Yeah, I'm confident that she'll kill this boss. However, what I don't like about that is that I lose these two kills. So then we have to pose the question of, am I willing to trade Pyre health? How much Pyre health am I having to trade here? I'm going to trade five away. Yeah, I'm definitely so I'm gonna trade two pyre health for these two kills, and that's very worth. If I again, so another thing, I guess. So now you can make the next case, which is, should I play entombed explosives? I think so. I think that the outcomes where this backfires are very few. I have to first lose the fifty-fifty on pulling. 
fade back from primitive mold, and then on top of that, I have to not draw another primitive mold. Yeah. Wow. Well, my, uh... Uh... <laughs> that, that is unfortunate. Uh, surely I won't miss primitive mold again, right? No, I'm not I'm not going to do this to myself. I'm not going to I'm not going to open up a position where to try and save 3 pyre health I lose the run. That is just unfortunate though. I don't know what else to say about that other than goddamn unlucky. Just end my turn, take my 3 damage as I was supposed to. Yeah, cuz also I have to pull back this idiot now as well. How ridiculous is that, though? Like, how ridiculous is that, Barry? Almost fucking... Oh. oh. It's like, ah, oh, well, what are the odds? I finally convinced myself to make a play that has any reliance on randomness. I move away from the sure thing. And what happens? The game laughs. Uh, I will take the Subsuming Blade. Killing Little Fade in this run is good. I think I'll take Preserve Thorns. Preserve Thorns is nice for the same reason that Entombed Explosive is nice, right? Moves over a front enemy for us. Why am I calling them front enemies and not heavies? I don't know. I'm going left here because we don't have the money to buy a trinket. Uh, like, if, if a trinket rolls low on its cost, we could afford it. However, that's not worth banking on. Left side has removals. This is a bait. Uh, I'm pretty sure Wildwood Sap is a bait. We're going to kill Seraph by just playing Little Fade on all three floors with 7, 8, and 9 burnout. Or in that area. So what does that mean I should do? I think that means that I should duplicate Primitive Mold. And then I can put Entombed Explosive into the rotation as well, which is pretty nice. Entombed Explosive can take maybe an extra round off of Seraph for us, which is pretty good. I'm down with that. I can only think of benefits. Oh, this combat is nuts. Don't take a plus six. This combat is worth so much. We get so many kills on Little Fade from this combat. We're gonna play Tycoon on middle four this time as well. Hold this bad boy over. I should burn this card out. I've been holding it and I've not been playing it. I should start spending it. Uh, I could... Now, if I Razor Sharp, I will not get the amount of kills that I want. So I'm not catching this Collector, it looks like, which is fine. There's there's something I want more than money, and that stacks on Little Fade, and that's what we're getting. Because the big thing, the way that Little Fade really snowballs, is when you get her to the amount that is required to kill a Heavy on the boss, like, on the last time you'll see that Heavy, so in this case, on floor 6. When you reach that number in time... Ah, I have a dripfall coming up? I have a dripfall coming up, it's okay. But when you reach that number in time, then she just gets to farm the combat that comes after. Like, to an extreme degree. She's going to get a lot of kills on the next combat, is the idea here. I don't want to greed this Clipped Guardian, I don't think. Yeah, you're at 11, so you'll be at 16. Th this is a this is a combat that is a lot of kills, but it's also something that we have to be very, we have to be very careful about because spikes doesn't do well in the sycophants, and as a result, sometimes someone takes a 16. Goes two, six, 12. Okay, our draw is pretty bad. We missed all of our important cards. I needed to be able to play one of these sooner. Okay. Burn this. Open it up. I want to kill one of these. Fade gets the same amount of kills, but then the Tycoon doesn't take 20. Do I care about that? Does Tycoon's health actually matter here? I don't think it does. Do 
I sting three of these, you'll take eight. If I sting three of these, does take three kills, or it takes it takes two kills from Fade. Right now, she's getting three. Two, six, six. Oh. I can reform her on the top four and she'll be at 100. So with five damage from somewhere else she can catch this guardian, but then the tycoon falls off. But I guess I don't care. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. I'm not sure. Have I played the... I need to play this just in case I don't. Because uh, sometimes I forget. Sorry, I bumped my desk. I'm gonna burn this as well. So, this is a this is a weird one. If I do, if I pull, let's talk through each of the options here and then decide what the best play is. If I play one sting on this floor, Fade kills these three. Ten damage goes here. If I play two stings on this floor, Fade kills these two, and then this damage goes here. So. The worst outcome is if I play two stings. That gets me only two kills on Little Fade, but this and this Clip Guardian still goes up the same. Three stings lets me push a 91 into the Guardian and then kill him next turn, but I'm losing uh, two kills. I think that that's the way I want to go here. Although I have the Dripfall coming up, so I can move this guy down. If he would strike, off, if the Dripfall didn't apply dazed, it would be so good for us here. Uh, okay, I've been sitting here talking through this for a while, but there's a lot of ways to go about it, and it does it. It seems inconsequential, but it matters. I think I'm gonna triple sting the the clip defender down here is my answer, and then the last question is, do I want to uh, razor sharp edge this? No, but I should razor sharp edge one of these. Yeah, and I guess I could have vine grasped it at a hundred on little fade. Okay. Lots of, lots of ways to go about that one. Play one of you. She wipes the floor, which is very good. I need to... So I want to start with... Yeah, I don't get the Subsuming Blade here, but that's okay. When I don't draw this card on turn one, it's not that good. Bring it back. And then what? Uh, I drop him, right? If I drop him, he takes 10. That's fine. I could, I guess I could kill him here with the explosive, actually. That seems worth. That seems worth? I think that seems worth. And he's out of our hair. Okay. Little Fade is above the 105 threshold, which is really nice. We got that guy without taking any damage, which is very nice. I did not get to kill one of these, which is not very good. Wish I could have killed one of these guys. Uh, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna take these kills. I don't need to... Do I need to respect Crystal Cloak? Ooh, great question. Great question. Do I respect Crystal Cloak here? Uh, I think I can. With the Dripfall, I don't miss out on too many kills, also. I mean, I miss out on some, of course, but... I play this bad boy, he only does 10. I should respect Crystal Cloak and play Fade down here, I think. Although, I guess I... No, I don't need to respect Crystal Cloak here. That's fine. I'm okay with this. I'll respect Crystal Cloak enough to leave the explosive. But I don't think I actually need to think about this boss in any sort of threatening, ma uh, threatening way. Oh, I even get to reset Little Fade here. Okay. I, I said that at the start that I thought this was going to be a very uh, messy run, and as it turns out, this is just a run where I overthink every single turn. Which is also fine. I think, anyway. I want Little Fade in the back here so that the Crystal Cloak's stealth runs out. Ah, should I put this in front? My mistake. Okay. As long as I pull one more reform here, we're fine. Yeah, we pulled one more. Cool. 
Uh, I don't think Tycoon can get anything here. I'm playing anyway. Alright. Good enough, good enough. Uh, lots, lots to talk about there, but we got it. 130 spikes on Fade is a real, like, that's a... That's a really good number to be at on 4-5. None of those kill Fade for me. I mean, I guess technically the left card could have, but come on. And Snare is really good. Being able to stop enemies from moving away from Little Fate is excellent. Having Forcing them to hit her a second time can be very useful. Uh, I don't really feel like I need Steel Shop upgrades. I'm gonna go left. Gonna pull Restores, I suppose? We're not playing towards regen. We're playing towards Little Fade having enough health to just tank Seraph three rounds and kill Seraph. That's the line here. Double snack and snare. Oops, I'm zooming blade cheaper. I don't want to make anything consume here. I don't really want to double stack anything. So we're gonna roll again. Hold over, hold over and snare is pretty good here. It answers heavies for the rest of time, I believe. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take razor sharp down by one. No, I'm gonna take subsuming blade down to zero. Yeah. And then I'll remove... I'll start removing primitive molds. We don't need as many. Uh, there's, a, there's not a whole lot of turns where they're that important. Monster Rail Spike. Uh, this is probably just a skip, actually. I think that one of the things that I would like to see them change is... Did I not remove a primitive mold? Am I crazy? What card did I remove instead of primitive mold? Why are there five primitive molds here? Hang on a minute. What did I remove? I thought I removed a primitive mold. What's missing here? Where did I put my money in removing? I'm losing it. I love Vine Grasp. Got the Sacred Wick still. Both Strip Falls. What did I remove? Oh god. I know I removed something. Five primitive molds. Oh, did I just remove the last restore? I think I did. Okay. Uh, I guess I shouldn't have because it's really an an annoying to me that you can't put plus 20 on this and add purge and reduce the cost to zero. I wish that it would just like let you ignore that plus 20 power and get the add purge to that card because that would be very nice. I think I removed a restore. Rage Fell can be scary here, uh, for sure. If we can kill Fade ourselves on turn one, it'll be good. And the other thing I'm going to do in this one is I'm just gonna, yeah, okay. I'm gonna disregard Wickless Tycoon, most likely, here. So we Fade, kill, and reform. She doesn't gain much from this, but fine. But I'm just gonna play Tycoon on this floor. I'm not going to play Explosive until I have both uh, Holdover Reforms in hand. We're going to play Middle Floor, and then if we have to move up with Fade, we have to move up with Fade. I don't think we'll need to, but occasionally something like this may force me to, actually. <laughs> Just loses a kill, which is fine. I suppose. Is there any way for me to get her this kill? I don't think so. I don't think there's anything fancy I can do about that. Just burn our cards. Pretty sure if we play Little Fade every turn, we should win. I really need to get to work on this Subsuming Blade, though. There's just nothing for me to play it on. I need to draw it turn one to start scaling it on Fade, but I don't want to. I don't want to steal kills from her here. Yeah, definitely don't want to do that. I can play this here. It's fine. What do I do with this? I guess nothing for now. Hmm. I, like, I just I don't want to take a kill away from Little Fade. There's no reason to. The card is basically just there to kill Little Fade on turn one, and it, eventually it's going to be able to kill her on turn two as well. I looked at this floor not dying, and I went, "Oh God!" <laughs> Realized I didn't replay Fade. 
I'm not gonna play the explosive actually. I'm just gonna let that go. I wanna see like if we can if we can look confident in uh, just playing little fade here. Also, when the next time I see it would be moved through between floors. Can you pull a vine grasp? Can you find grasp a unit that's rooted? I have no idea. I'm kind of worried. I don't know if I don't want to find out actually because it's very bad, but it's interesting. I know that if I were to drip farm here, it would just consume the roots. Is interesting. Anyway, I want to see if Little Fade can win if I just do this, right? Where I just sit here and I play her over and over again. Because if she can kill Fel, then I think we can kill Seraph with her. I just need to make sure that I plan it out properly. Six. I need her health to be a little higher. Also, what would be helpful would be a uh, Shard Channeler, right? Shard Channeler would be pretty big. Shard Channeler is probably the nuts. Like, it's probably the perfect pull. This is the one turn that I could subsuming blade and I don't even pull it. No vine grafts. No way to kill my little fate here. No vine grasp, no subsuming blade. No way. Uh, I'll just save this kill for later. Fine. Make sure I keep a primitive mold on deck. Uh, interesting, huh? So I shouldn't fuck around with Fel, right? Okay. But we'll get we'll get the damage here. I should not mess around with this one, I don't think. Seven or ten, yeah, okay. Fine. Take this else. Uh, I'm I'm so confident that this is fine that I'm going to save this man for a kill. I missed one kill by playing it safe, but I'd rather be safe than dead. The fade in front she'll kill. Oh she doesn't kill actually. I think this explosive would also not make a difference. I'm fine. Uh, actually, I should play the explosive up here so I can subsuming blade it. Yeah. This is a run that has so many meta things to do. There's so many things for me to do on this run. It's kind of overwhelming how much there is to be done. Like like this, right? There's there's just there's so many things like that where I just have, oh if I razor sharp that statue I get an extra kill, right? There's just so much. There's so much to do. I love it. Very cool. I'm not going to take any of these. I shouldn't I don't need I guess I could go this is a small deck. I could go spreading spores. And we could just we could just go insane with spreading spores actually. In a twenty card deck with double draw. Hmm. Alright. I'll try it. Because the deck right now, this is a this is a concept that I talk about a lot. This deck doesn't do anything. Like, I, when you draw through the deck the first time, uh, once you're done, and we're gonna go left to upgrade Spreading Spores, once you've drawn through the deck for the first time, you want to have played out all your consume cards, and you want to have played out all of your... Uh, like just like all your cards, right? You want to play out all your consumes, you want to play out all of your units. And what you're left with is going to be the core of what you've built as your deck. And you want to make sure that the core of your deck does something. Like when every card that you draw is at least somewhat meaningful. Presently in this deck, it's just primitive mold. It's the only card that matters because Little Fade does all the work. By adding in Spreading Spores, what I do is that since the only card that matters in this deck is Holdover, once I play out all my consumes and all my units, I I just have these two cards, which are holdover, sitting there. I play those every turn, and then the other five cards I draw per turn, I can now just spend those cards stacking up spreading spores, right? And that's cool, because that gives us, like, say Little Fade misses the mark, and we miss the Seraph kill by, like, a thousand damage, a 30 regen Wickless Tycoon might clean that up, where otherwise we would have lost. This combat sucks. Or it might be very good for us. One of the two. I am going to not take the trial. Because of my desire for spikes stacking. This is a this is the combat that matters. Uh quite a bit. 
And we're gonna scale past 190 pretty quickly, which is good. Mission accomplished. We're going to actually aim for a bottom floor play here. This is where Preserve Thorns comes into play, where it smooths over that otherwise awkward look. Entombed Explosive would have done the same. Actually, I could... No, I can't. If I... Because, <laughs> like, what if I... No, there's no way. There's no way that Little Fade kills both of these. It's not possible, so we're just going to move on. Don't spend too much time on it. And I didn't kill in Reformer there because I don't want her health to go down by... Yeah, so I, I didn't kill and reform her there because I didn't want her max HP to go down to 4. Because if her max HP goes down to 4, then this reform doesn't take her above 10. Which is the big number that we want to hit. We want to get her above 10 because once she goes above 10 on the health point, she starts wiping these floors. Kinda. Once she goes above 13, she starts wiping these floors, I should say. This is where the ensnare comes in. Uh, might as well drift fall this. Take it. And I'll hold this over, sure. 186. We need one more kill after... Yeah, so this this is where she starts wiping for us. Once we get this purifier, anyway. Like, there's, just, there's one enemy left over from the rooting, which is making it a little awkward. However, it's fine. We're getting there. Might as well bring this back down. Not like anything bad happens if I let those stack up. Sometimes maybe I get a kill off of it, who knows. There's no reason not to, which is why I'm going to. Yeah, now she wipes the floor. I could Spreading Spore's little fade here, I guess. Probably not worth it, because she's gonna burn out. Yeah, don't do that, it's a waste. Yeah, she's wiping it. Very good. I don't know. Keep fucking with them. Oh, I can see what this does. It does appear to just move them. However, uh, we'll test it a little more thoroughly here down the line. Mm -hmm. Why does he take four? How do you take four here? Oh, from the spikes on the tycoon, of course. Anyway, just had to had to look at that one and piece it together for a minute. If I keep these guys cycling, I'm eventually going to... Uh, I should play those stings. I bet. I'm gonna kill them with Little Fade's uh, auto attack, right? Never mind. Not right. Incorrect. Burn that. I should only... Since I'm not gonna play Explosive, I should only hold over one Primitive Mold so that I can stack Wickless Typhoon a little more. Right now, Fade's gonna die. I need to pull... It doesn't matter too much, I guess. Should play in snare, I suppose, there. Yeah, should play in snare there. I don't know. It's fine. Just make sure I hold these both over. Having them both actually having them both held over is good for the tycoon, but eventually No, I need to I need to keep the tycoon in. There's not much more eventually to talk about. The run is over. Like we're on Seraph here pretty soon. Uh, if you take one round, we'll kill him. Pick. Great work, brother. Alright. Good work, good work. We're above 200, which is just... It's excellent. Above 200 is great. I think that... Oh, Bramble Ash. <laughs> Bramble Ash would be so good if I could get it to hit Seraph. I can get this to hit Seraph, actually. If I freeze it, I can. Oh, and we can hit Seraph for like... 3k. Alright. So we're gonna keep we're gonna hit another magic shop here. First of all. Uh, channel heart isn't great. Exploding candle steals kills and pyrestone housing we can't make use of. Channel heart isn't good because the enemies are going to die anyway, so plus twenty on this doesn't help us at all. Yeah, that's pretty good. Little Fade has now effectively doubled her attack. That's solid. 
Pull two primitive molds. Actually, I'm gonna pull one primitive mold and the explosive. I don't need it anymore. It's just clogging us up here. Permafrost, the exact upgrade I wanted for. Great. Excellent. Take Vine Grasp up to 13. More damage to Little Fade so I can kill her at an important time is good. I think that's really good. 23 means that I can kill Little Fade whenever I need to. Okay. I would be surprised if this went against me. However, I do need to give this one uh, respect. I need to respect this combat as well. This is not in the bag by any means, but the way that I lose this requires me to make a lot of mistakes effectively. Starting with a bad draw. Such as this one. Uh, okay. What do we do with this? We move... I think we move you down? Nah. Uh, yeah, nah. We have the ensnare. I, I can move him down. I'll save the... I'll save the health. We have the ensnare. With the ensnare pull, I can just hold this here. And kill it next turn. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be- I'm going to aim to keep the enemies killed on the bottom floor, but I'm going to put Tycoon on the top floor. The reason for this is so that I can scale Tycoon safely without him getting chipped and have his regen go up, and also when Fade is done she's going to land on the top floor and we want to tank on top floor for her. How many times can I kill her here? I can kill and reform her twice. Doesn't quite get her to- 15, but that's fine. I can... Yeah, so... Or no, it'll get her just above it, right? Yeah. These guys go by, I'm not super pressed about it. We should have answers built in. Namely, we're just gonna sting them, it looks like. Yeah. I'm gonna keep them here, though, just because I guess it, there's no good reason to keep them here. I'm not- I'm not too worried, though. Like, we should have answers to the 15. The, the Shade Wings should be fine. We have Stings, we have Bramble Lashes, we have the what-have-you of the run. Spreading Spore's bottom card. Even in a 20-card deck, my draws look pathetic. It's tragic. I have reformed Little Fate. I should get rid of Sacred Wicks. I don't need to hold this over because the only unit that can die is Wickless Tycoon. And if he dies, then... Uh, uh, why bother, basically? I should pull Stings. I shouldn't... Uh, I shouldn't keep, keep these. The Spike Stacks should not matter at this point. 380. The idea is now uh, very simple. It's going to be I play Little Fade. On the bottom floor, she clears the, the enemies out, and then I play a little fade on the middle floor, and I dome Sarah for 2460. That's the idea of this now. She, we've also now hit the point where little fade wipes the entire floor and dies, which is the scaling level that we want to see. Great signs all around. I feel, I feel pretty, I feel pretty confident at this point. It's not like a 100% win, but I feel reasonably safe in saying I think that this is a win. Something has to go pretty wrong for me to lose this. However, it could happen. Uh, the thing that could happen is I could drop my hold over on accident. Uh, it's happened before. You might be thinking, well, how could you do that? It's happened before. Trust me. I can do it. If there's anyone who can lose this run, I want you to know it's me. However, in this moment, I believe we have it. I think. I think. Money, it's 35, so she's actually living by one right now. Uh, we do not want that. And 20, that would be bad. I should just take her max health by two? Or no, I should give this guy plus 10. Yeah, you give the last one plus 10 and then he just kills her off. as well and may as well and yeah the spreading spores plan is actually not coming to fruition very well because it was the bottom card it was just kind of a backup plan it was something to do in the meantime but we found better answers right the deck has trouble drawing through itself as well because of the number of uh, holdovers i guess i don't know 
the spreading spores were just in a bad spot. There's only there's only two holdovers, and I'm not even using them that much anyway. Fine, she's gonna be fresh as well. This is over. We won for sure. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Like no doubt in my mind, we take it here. Five ninety six to Sarah there. Take this off. Uh, as I'll do this. Yeah, I'm confident that we kill him here. And it's gonna feel pretty good too. Dome, yeah, so Little Fade on her own at 51 health does 2431 to Sarah. Sorry, 2432. Then we get to pop him for 2980. So the idea behind the regen plan was that uh, Little Fade, with the way that this deck was re was built, is going to have a lot of burnout. My estimations were actually a little low when I said 7, 8, 9. We got to 9, 10, 11. The idea was if this Little Fade didn't kill, if we played her on all three floors, then on the top floor we have a Wickless Tycoon who has a little regen in him who can potentially offer maybe an extra round or two for Little Fade to take an extra chunk or two out of Seraph. However, we found other options. We found uh, the Bramble Lash as our killer. And we found this Gnarled Root to help out as well. Really, like, truly a great run. This is the sort of run that I wish that they had more of. I was talking about this a little bit in my Discord today. I feel like the one thing that I find this game missing is more reasons to really care in combats, right? I spent, like... I, I think I spent the most time I've ever spent talking out a turn, talking out that turn on floor five on the Sycophants of Seraph to figure out how to maximize my gains, right? And that feels good. That feels really, really good to have that. And I hope that they add more stuff like that to the game as time goes on. Because sitting down and looking at a Spikes Fade run is just... Spikes Fade feels good because scaling her is... A constant challenge that you want to be thinking about and every single turn matters in terms of how many kills do you get onto little fade on that turn and i like i just i really like that it feels good as well to balance like well maybe i take three pyre damage to add two extra kills to little fade right and i go yeah that was worth it and then once we get that i think that was the only damage of the run actually yeah created three pyre health right here but yeah anyway thanks for watching if you enjoyed, do not forget to leave me a like, subscribe if you would like to see more. I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.